Hello YouTubers, today we're going to, today's our first installment of Ray's Tech Tips. Uh, Ray, what is the first thing you look at on every pinball machine? Line cord. Why? And plug. Uh, it's usually in bad shape and it's generally an indicator of the work that's done to the rest of the machine. Uh, although not always, but um, it's the first thing that you deal with when you have a machine that is electronic. It plugs into the wall. So you must pay attention to something that is actually going to be a, either a shock hazard or a fire hazard. It's common sense. Several examples of cords. This is what you'll find on some round cords. It's got the ground and the conductors, although it's been mishandled. But it's got damage here. Um, if it continues, it'll pull away from the uh, prongs and then short. Burn your house down. Yeah, and burn your house down. Or the fire. It's another example of what people do. They cut or break off the, the uh, ground. Not a good idea. The ground is there for several reasons on different devices. On jukeboxes the ground is important so you don't have audio on and um, so you don't get an electrical shock touching it in a neighboring device with the ground because you'll get a 60 volt uh, AC voltage shock. Can you show us what that looks like? No. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't hurt that bad, but it's 60, it's half line current. With no ground, you're completing the, the circuit by grounding your, through yourself. So you're, you're ground, you're getting 60 volts AC to ground to complete the missing circuit. And another thing you want to look at when you buy a machine is don't buy one like this, with this. Ouch. Uh, n nothing good's under there. <laughs> um, I've seen several patched cords, so my best advice is don't look at the machine first, look, look at the line cord. Uh, it's important because it's, it's, it's simple common sense. Uh, these are examples of cords you can buy brand new. This is Pinball Resource 14 foot flat cord that goes on certain machines. Uh, it's not detachable, it solders in, and these are about seven bucks. Seven bucks. Six dollars and thirty-five cents plus shipping, probably seven bucks. This is a detachable cord. Modern uh, Bally Williams. Yes, all the new WPC or any kind of game with detachable cords, including videos. It's a standard Japanese uh, detachable and th th standard three prong. And th this is a uh, and. What if your cord's about uh, a foot and a half, you know, 18 inches long? <laughs> yeah, that's what this is. And uh, the round cords go on newer devices generally. Old flat cords, old machines from 70s, 80s, early 80s had flat cords. Uh, generally, they went to round cords on your newer devices. Um, this is a eight and a half, nine foot cord. It's probably eight and a half. I have several different lengths. I have eight and a half, ten, nine foot. Depends on, you know, what vendor you buy from. Um, Most of the pinball suppliers, I would assume. Right, and you want a 16-gauge wire, not this. You can see the difference. What's that, a computer cord? Yes, and this is 18-gauge or 20. Will work, will overheat, will cause problems. Not enough. The, the device struggles to get amperage, and it can't, so it plays a lot less. It's important. This is not only thicker with the vinyl, and the reason for that diameter difference is the cord inside the conductors, the stranded conductors are thinner. You don't want this on a pinball device or a, a video game or anything other than a low draw device like a computer. Uh, the, eight, uh, the 16 gauge 3 wire is what you want. That's about the different uh, cords you're probably going to find. And the next thing you want to check is if you really don't mind having this on your game that's fine. <laughs> But you want to look inside of it if you really want to. And of course, if you replace the line cord, then you don't have to have that thing on your on the end of your, your you game. Can, I'll show uh, how it's done in a minute. But you can easily put this on just about as quick as <laughs> And of course, only one of that will fit in whatever socket you're trying to plug it in. Yeah, this isn't bad though. This is one of the ones that doesn't take a lot of space on a, uh, um, an adapter or a... 
uh, strip, plug yeah, strip, yeah. A plug strip because it's flat. These will actually go next to each other. The round ones will not. You know, we were at that auction and I was trying to plug in games and I was ripping out people's stuff who had like, were taking up two spots yeah. with that junk. The, the round ones will. This won't. This is made by Hubble. They, these things are like $9 a piece. They're very nice the way they break away and split. It's nice. easy to do a nice job. I'll put it on eBay. I'll get, I'll get However, six bucks for it. However, this person left oh half God. the conductors and not even going here. And the ground, I don't think they really have anything hardly going there. And it is loose. Oh my. So people that do this kind of work don't generally do quality. You're going to find this and then they close it up. So you can see it. Right, and it's doing something in here. And even though this is made for a round or flat cord, it's not going to clamp this very well. It's going to, when you yank cords out, people generally don't do that. They yank it like here. Well, over, that's what happened here. They probably did this okay in the beginning, but through fatigue, uh, this happened. So that's why you really don't want to deal with these anyway because a molded cord is much cleaner, nicer, and yeah, it doesn't take up a little line strip. So with that... Okay, this is really difficult to do. Show us how it's done. What are, what are we looking at here? Well, first you want to remove the old cord. So you can... What is that? Either cut or unsolder. There? This is a, uh, a surge suppressor, line conditioner. Uh, it's on all pinball machines. It really doesn't matter too much. It's to prevent a uh, um, an over voltage to come through and go into the machine to a certain point. Okay. They're, they're very cheap devices. They don't work very well. This red device here is called a varistor and it's rated in joules and what that means is it's supposed to clamp a surge that comes in um, along with this. So when you see a game that's got all this black soot here that burn up, this shorted out, got hit by lightning or some kind of uh, surge. And if this goes bad, it will generally short and blow the main fuse, which is located uh, here. Oh, we don't even want to look at no, that. No, no. The we same guy that <laughs> did this line cord. Side note, here's this. the biggest hack. Nice. You, you too. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that next time. Uh, line cord. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's neat, really. Um, the way to put a line cord in is um, to unsolder the two points and the ground, which is the third point, and then remove the cord and feed it back in. Um, there are two conductors to AC, and to keep your devices all the same, you want to pay attention to that. Uh, in this case, black goes to the blue lead so this is your black which is your line hot and neutral is white on AC and that's the other side now on a line cord most people don't understand it because they're not electricians you have to be an electrician there's a flat cord has no black or white so really people don't they look at this and don't know what, what to do with it round cords do have colors black and white so that's easy All right. There is ribbing on one side of this line cord, and on, the other... On, we're on high def, we can see that. Right, the other side is smooth, um, no texture, no marking. Okay. Okay, the, the ribbed side is your neutral, and the smooth side is your black. Hot. Yeah, hot. And that's how you go about putting that on. You put your, your smooth side of your cord here. Whenever you do a device, that has this unmarked AC. It'll still work. You can mix them up. If you get them backwards, that's fine, except if you have two pinball machines next to each other and you touch both side <laughs> rails with them off, doesn't matter. They're plugged in, off, you'll get a shock. Wow! Yeah, about ready to solder in the cord. You want to heat up a solder iron. I see electrical tape down here too. Is that? It's factory. That's fa oh, yeah. yeah. Well, no wonder. They did that factory on uh, Stearns. 
we're working on an early solid state stern here, see which. Which, by the way, is coming to the end of its restoration. Feed it through before you strip it so you don't keep bending the conductors over. Okay. So it comes through the standard spot. Yep. And you can feed about six, eight, ten inches of foot in, and then it'll come down at you. You don't even have to take the back glass off. You pull it down and you put it in through the quarter leaf, which you don't even have to unbolt. The factory restraint was just to simply tie the cord into a knot. Do a little bit extra. And then you want to strip your conductors back. You can start with whichever one you want. This is so simple to do. You want to twist the conductors. Why prepare why, them? Why is it that nine out of ten pins that come in here have the same cord that you just took off? Well, I don't know. It's easy to do. You need uh, solder flux, which helps melt the solder easier on heavy conductors like this. And this is a 25 watt pencil iron. It's nice to have a 35 or more. Some people use a soldering gun, which is high wattage, 100 watts. That'll work good on stuff like this also because it's heavy. But right. if you have flux and you have a hot pencil, I hang my pencils like this while I'm waiting for them to warm up. And these things get super hot when you do this. So this is actually probably, you can see it's purple. This is probably putting out at least seven, eight hundred. This is putting out as much as a, a, a soldering gun right now as far as heat if you hang it upside down. Huh. It's a little trick you can use and you can use this for circuit board work in an emergency out in the field or heavy stuff if you do this. And this is just regular uh, 60, 40 and it's, it is not a regular diameter. I like the 080, the 80 thousandths because it melts quicker. You don't have such a big, because that takes heat to melt solder. And if you, you don't want the, the big solder, you, the small stuff is, is better for this. So those are the things you're going to need. And of course, wire strippers and, and side cutters. You want to tin your conductors first. And you want to leave like a lump on there. Because the more you have here, the easier it places. So you don't melt the vinyl away or burn your fingers. You can get off and on easy. A lot of people struggle with this. And this is about the right length you're going to want. So you can put the ground on first. you're black, you're hot, which is again the non-ribbed section on a flat cord. Right. That's it. And that's what you do to replace a line cord to make your device safe so you don't either get shocked or cause a fire. Because after all, these are wood and they're painted. If there ever was a fire, it would not stop. You'd not be able to put it out. You hear about fires with space heaters all the time in the wintertime in cold environments, whereas People plug in too much, they overdraw line cords, and vinyl is plastic and does catch on fire, and it's hard to put out like tire, or like a rubber tire. 
So the bottom line is you pay attention to the line quarter. It's the first thing that comes into your device, um, and it's a cheap, safe thing to do, and it makes sense. Very good. Well, thanks for your tip, and uh, we'll be back uh, next Friday with something new. Uh, looks like we're going to be doing some T-molding on a uh, pair of, what are those things, F and F's, Fast and Furious uh, yeah. drivers? We're going to do some T-molding, uh, just a, a detail item on make make the machines look as nice as they actually are yeah it's an inexpensive way to make your video or whatever game has t-molding there are a lot of devices with t-molding um, even pinball heads some of them have t-molding it depends on the model but um, today's t-molding is made different and it's hard to fit in there is a technique that we'll show you next week that makes it easier very cool but, uh, that's it for the line cord thing. It's it's well worth doing. It doesn't take anything as far as special setup. It's very easy. I do it in the field all the time. Uh, in people's low lit homes, it doesn't take. You don't have to have anything on the bench. Um, anyway, that's my tip to make your device safe and enjoy it. What you want to do is you want to you want to hit this subscribe button up in this corner. P point the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep in mind quality pinballs. Oh, best best are here. best pins in the world. Not up the street. Back wall of the hardware store. Thanks everybody. We'll see you next week. Hi, and welcome to the Gaming Collectibles YouTube channel of pinball and arcade videos, where we are building the most comprehensive collection of videos around. We feature pinball machines as well as unusual arcade equipment. The old, the new, the rare and certainly interesting. Check us out every Sunday for a brand new video, and also come back on Fridays for raised tech tips for all you pinball enthusiasts out there. And if you like what you see, please subscribe to our page. Also, you can like us on Facebook, where you can follow us here at the shop, what we're doing, and check out all the latest equipment we have for you. Thank you for visiting and subscribing. Join the circus.